This is problem 2, 1, 5, 3 from the textbook Brow, and this is a nonlinear spring system. Here we have the equation of motion of the spring mass damper system, and the spring is nonlinear. The equation is given by 100 the acceleration plus 500 the velocity plus 10,000 x minus 400 x cubed. The terms that are multiplied by x represent the spring force. We like to determine the static equilibrium position of the system. We like to determine the linearized equation of motion for small displacement about the static equilibrium position. And we want to find the natural frequency of vibration of the system for small displacements. The equation of motion is written in terms of x, and x is measured with respect to the static equilibrium position. So when we write the equation, we have 100 times the acceleration, 500 times the velocity, 10,000 times x minus 400x cubed. And as you see, we don't have the weight. The weight is already cancel with the static deflection, as you recall from the theory that we did that analysis. However, in order to find the equilibrium position, we have to take into consideration that deflection that is done by the weight. The terms that multiply the acceleration is the mass, the terms that multiply the velocity is the constant of the damper, and then we have the force of the spring. To find the equilibrium position, we have to consider the weight that does the static deflection. So the force of the spring for zero velocity and zero acceleration is equal to the weight. And that would allow us to calculate how much static deflection we have, and that will be our equilibrium position. When we make the force of the spring equals to the weight, we get a cube polynomial. To find the roots, that we have to use numerical methods, and you can use MATLAB, or you can use, for example, in my case, I use a solver from Excel. So just find out the best way you feel comfortable finding the roots of a Q polynomial. The roots are 0 0.0981, the second root is 4.9502, and the third one is negative 50483. We will use the smallest positive root as our static equilibrium position. To find our linearized force of the spring, we will derive an expression for the force of the spring with respect to x and we will evaluate that derivative about our equilibrium position. The derivative is equal to negative 400 times 3x squared plus 10,000 evaluated at x0, which is 0 0.0981, and that's equal to the linear constant of the spring, which is negative 400 times 3 times 0 0.0981 squared plus 10,000. And that gives me a value of 9988.44 newtons over meters. Now that we have the linear version of a constant of the spring for a specific point, then we can write a new linear equation of motion that will be valid for small displacements around that equilibrium position. 100 times the acceleration, which is x2 dot, plus 500 times the velocity, which is x dot, plus the constant of the spring, 9988.44 times x equals to zero. This is x measured about that equilibrium position. 
So what is with the acceleration is the mass, with the velocity is the constant of the damper, and with x is the constant of the spring. Now we have the equation in a form that we are very used to work with, and the natural frequency is square root of the constant of the spring divided by the mass, which is 9988.44 divided by 100. So our natural frequency of vibration is 9.9942 radians over sec. This is what the problem asks. So we already solved the problem. We could go a little bit farther and, for example, determine what is the type of the response of the system about this equilibrium position. So how do we find that? What I will do is find the damping ratio to see which type of system we have. Is it an overdamp system? Is it an underdamp system? Is it a critical damp system? Let's see. So we calculate the damping ratio, which is defined as C over the critical damping 2 times square root of Kf. And if we plug in the numbers, we get that C is equal to 0 0.25. That gives me an underdamped system. Therefore, the system vibrates damped frequency, which is defined as the natural frequency multiplied by square root of 1 minus theta squared. We plug in the numbers and we get that this is 9.67 radians per second. So if we use a graphing calculator, we can see the response. As you see, the amplitude, if we give an initial condition, the amplitude reduces its time exponentially. Remember that that curve that involves that uh, response is e to the negative theta omega nt.